Welcome to Ocean Sun Dive Resort in Tulamben, Bali. My name is Ricardo and today I would like to introduce you to a new diving device from Maris. It is the Horizon, a semi-close rebreather that was specially developed for recreational divers. Janos is here by my side because he wants to take the SCR Horizon course and has a few interesting questions on this topic. Together we will take a look at what makes the Horizon so special and what advantage it has. Besides, we also want to show you the most important components and prepare the horizon for a dive. Janos, before we start, please share with us what interests you in the horizon. Yes, of course. The reason why I'm curious about the horizon is the promised longer diving time. Maris also speaks of a revolutionary approach and I'm very excited to see what this new technology is all about. Well, the technology is actually not that new since it is a rebreather and they have been known for over a century. In 1884, the popular science, a renowned magazine with the scientific community, mentioned a successful diving operation with a rebreather that had been developed by Henry Albert Floyds. The Horizon is now the latest and most modern result of this decade long development of semi close rebreathers and comes with some interesting technical innovations. You are talking about a semi close rebreather. What does that mean exactly? A rebreather is a circuit system in which the air circulates through our breathing. There are two types. If we do not lose any air, we talk about the close rebreather. A semi close system, however, release some air from the circuit into the environment. The close rebreather is a demanding system and used by experienced divers for deep and long dives. A semi-close rebreather is less demanding and you can start your training with less experience. The Horizon only requires 24 locker dives as well as the Nitrox and the Deep Diver Speciality. That's great! So you don't need to be trained as a technical diver to be able to use a rebreather. Now I'm really excited to see how the Horizon works. First of all, let me explain the basic function that make a rebreather stand out. A rebreather is actually not much more than a plastic bag from which we breathe. Well, I hope the horizon is a little better than a plastic bag. Yes, of course. Here we only see the storage and the circulation. Breathing moves the air, which describes the circulation. This circulation takes place between the lungs and the plastic bag. And we do not lose any air to the environment, which then describes the storage. Yes, that makes sense. What are the other two functions? That's the extraction and addition. As is well known, the body burns oxygen during the metabolism and produces carbon dioxide. We now have to purify the air in this cycle of carbon dioxide, which describes the extraction. Finally, of course, we should also replenish our used oxygen, which is nothing more than the addition. We do have the horizon here. Could you show me in detail how it works? Yes, gladly. That can be explained very well by looking at the part of the air through the horizon. When we exhale into this mouth peep, a valve directs the air through the breathing hose into this counter lung. So here we see the storage of the exhaled air. This air then flows through these two chambers, where we have various valves for the oxygenation, and two cartridges with the so-called scrubber, which purifies the air. After the air has been cleaned and enriched with oxygen, it flows into the second counter lung and it's dodged again. When you now breathe in again, the fresh air comes back to the mouthpiece via this breathing hose and we close the circuit. We also simply call this cycle loop. Ah, understand. The counter lung really looks like a bag. But that's not plastic, is it? No, the material is something better. Strictly speaking, this is a food safe, elastic, high quality plastic. Since it has to be tied, it is sealed with a special welding technology and lies protected in the housing to avoid damage. Alright, so the exhaled air flows here into the counter lung and then into the first chamber. What exactly happens to the air here? Here we place the first cartridge with a scrubber. As a result, the air has to flow through the scrubber from the bottom to the top and the carbon dioxide is absorbed from the air by a chemical process. I have a full open cartridge here, where you can see what the scrubber looks like. 
The scrubber or lime is a fine grained granulate and it's specially designed for use in rebreathers. With the horizon, each cartridge holds about 1 kg. But why do we have two chambers here, so two cartridges? There are two reasons for this setup. One of Mars' targets during the development was to achieve low water resistance. The two chambers allowed a reduced high of the horizon and the streamlined design could be implemented. The second reason is security. The problem with scrubber is that we cannot measure or see when or if it is saturated with carbon dioxide. It does not absorb the carbon dioxide evenly, but saturates first at the point where the axial air flows in first. A time frame limits the use and tells us when the lime in the first cartridge is saturated to two thirds. We then change the lime because full saturation would be far too dangerous. Because of the distribution, we only change the scrubber from the first cartridge. The second cartridge with fresh lime then serves as a security in the unlikely event that we exceed the time limit and the first cartridge is fully saturated and cannot longer absorb carbon dioxide. Where do I see how long I can use the lime? You can see that on the integrated controller from the Horizon, which monitors all systems. Please have a look at the display. Down here, at the right bottom, we see a time. I have refilled the first cartridge today, then reset it at the scrubber settings in the controller and can now use this lime for 3 hours and 34 minutes. Okay, you said we are going to change the first cartridge. Aren't we changing the lime in the second cartridge? Since this cartridge still has unsaturated lime, we can simply use it in the first chamber until also here two thirds are saturated. So we simply exchange both cartridges. But doesn't the setup leave room for mistakes? That is why we have this little top marker, which is always screwed onto that cartridge, which is put into the first chamber. Simple but brilliant. So how does the addition work? The addition in Horizon happens through two different valves that supply the devices with breathing gas via the attached diving tanks. Here in the first chamber we have a so-called active valve, which enriches the air with 5 liters of breathing gas per minute. In the second chamber we have an electronic valve that can deliver another 25 liters per minute. So up to 30 liters are delivered to the Horizon. That sounds like a lot. What is it good for? I have to go back a little further and explain how the Horizon works. How about we do this together? Do you remember how much oxygen we have in the air we breathe? Yes, that's about 21%. Right. How much is it in the exhaled gas? I think it was around 17%. Exactly. With the normal regulator, this 17% is exhaled to the environment and we lose the oxygen it contains. With the rise now ever, the 70% remain in the circuit and we only inject the used 4% through the external gas supply. So we use the available oxygen far more efficiently, which in the end also extend our diving time. Can you go a bit more into detail about the diving time? Sure. With the normal regulator, we inhale, let's say, 50 liters of breathing gas per minute, but we also exhale all of it. With the used tank size and the planned depth, we can now calculate our diving time. With the Horizon, we also have 15 liters per minute of air consumption. But thanks to the circuit, we use the oxygen in the existing air several times and then see how much oxygen we have to replace in order to maintain a breathable gas of at least 21%. So the first thing I need to know is how high my oxygen consumption is and then I can calculate the required air supply. With the air supply, the oxygen content and the tank size of the external gas supply, I can now calculate the diving time. So with the regulator, we talk about air consumption. And with the horizon, it's about oxygen consumption. How much oxygen do we consume? It depends very much on your physical strain. In the idle state, this is 0.6 to 1 liter per minute. With heavy exertions, however, consumptions can increase up to 3 liters per minute. By the way, we call this metabolic oxygen consumption. It is not affected at all by ambient pressure, which is another advantage in terms of diving time. As a result, the consumption of breathing gas you carry with you is the same in every depth. If I got that right, I can dive at 30 meters just as long as at 10 meters depth? Yes, that's correct. The advantage of longer diving time with the horizon becomes more important the deeper you dive, as we then have enormous time savings compared to a regulator. 
This is really very interesting. But why do we have two valves? Let's take a closer look at the position of the valves. The active valve, which delivers 5 liters per minute, is located directly after the first scrubber cartridge. So there is a constant enrichment of the air here. The air then goes to the second chamber, through the second cartridge into the area where two sensors analyze the breathing gas. And if it does not have the desired oxygen content, the electronic valve opens automatically. As already mentioned, the valve can supply an additional 25 liters of breathing gas per minute, thus ensuring that the oxygen in your breathing gas is never less than 21%. This is what makes the Horizon so special since previous semi-close rebreathers only managed a maximum of 16 liters per minute. I see we have two tanks here. One of them appears to be nitrox. Yes, a breathing gas with at least 30% oxygen content must be used. When I show you some calculations later in the course, you will see that with 3 liters per minute of oxygen consumption, which means we have a heavy physical exertion, we need AN30 in order not to fall below the minimum permit value of 21% in the horizon. Okay, which means that the amount of oxygen in the horizon is less than in the tank. Yes, that's true. The breathing gas from the tanks is injected into the device via the valves. And they are mixed with your exhaled air. So it has to be less. We can determine the nitrox value in the horizon ourselves by setting our controller which controls the air supply with the electronic valve. The nitrox value in the horizon is our set point. We will take a closer look at that later when we are assembling it. What about the power supply for the horizon? Where is the battery located? Yes, the battery is here and we have a total of three circuits that are independent of each other. The first supplies the controller and the electronics and the other two supply the oxygen sensors. Why the oxygen sensors? The sensors measure the oxygen through an electrical current. I explain exactly how it works later in the course. For safety reason, each sensor has its own supply. And I see we use two tanks for external gas supply. It depends on the training and the device. Maris offers a no-deco and a deco version. The no-deco version is used with one scuba tank, the so-called bottom tank, and it's limited to a depth of 30 meters. Also, you cannot exceed the bottom tank. For the deco version, we use a second tank, the decompression tank, and have a depth limit of 40 meters. With the second tank, we are allowed to do 25 minutes of decompression, so we can exceed our bottom time for a certain period. And how do we assemble all this now? I would suggest that we do that together now. Agree? Agree. For the assembly, there is a checklist provided by SSI. This morning, I have already prepared the first three items on the list. I analyzed and checked the bottom tank and the deco tank, and I also prepared them so we can skip the beginning. I would suggest that you start with the item 4, and I will do what you read out. Verify the newest oxygen sensor is less than 7 months old and is reading correctly. Replace if necessary and mark date. The oxygen sensors must be replaced after 7 months. We wrote down the date on the sensors during the installation. As you can see, we installed these sensors last November. So can you change the sensors by yourself? Yes, it's very easy. And the sensors are screwed to this grid. Number 5. Select calibration mode on the controller and follow the on-screen instruction to complete the calibration. Ok, then please look at the controller. In the main screen we go to the settings in the menu. There we see calibration. We select this item. The controller now tells us to take the grid with the sensors out of the chamber. We need to confirm this. Now we need to push a button. Take a look here Janos. It is this button in the second chamber directly at the electronic box. We push and hold it down. The system now checks the voltage at the sensors. Ok, the controller tells us that everything is fine. And the next please. Ok, number 6. Install the sensor grid and verify the cable routing is correct. Here we put the grid back into the chamber and make sure that it sits correctly so that the lime cartridge will fit well into the chamber afterwards. Next item. Number 7. Inspect the remaining time on the scrubber material 
Refill with fresh scrubber material if necessary. We already did that and we had 3 hours and 34 minutes of diving time on the line. Number 8. Inspect the scrubber canister o-rings, clean sealant surfaces and grease if necessary. The o-rings sit on these two chambers here. Everything looks good. Ok, number 9. Install the scrubber canisters into the unit with the top marker on the exhale scrubber canister. Ok, here's our top marker. This means that the cartridge comes into the first chamber. As a result, the second cartridge comes into the second chamber where the sensors are located. Alright, number 10. Close and clamp the individual scrubber caps. These are these two red caps that we just clip in here. Check again if they are sitting correctly. Ok, that's fine. We also close the battery compartment. Finish, check. Number 11. Verify that the battery level on the controller is greater than 30%. To do this, we check the controller again and select the information on the right. Confirm twice and we can now see the charge level of E1, the first sensor, E2, the second sensor and DC our controller. Number 12. Close and secure the main cover. That's a simple click system. Hook in here and snap into a place on the other side. Please be careful, do not close by force and check whether the look is properly engaged. This looks good. Check next item please. 13. Inspect the non-return mushroom valves in the breathing loop mouthpiece. Inspect the mouthpiece and O-rings on the breathing loop, clean sealant surfaces and grease. Ok, let's take a closer look at everything. The non-return mushroom valves are designed to ensure that the air only flows through the circuit in one direction. One side lets the air in and the other side let it out. We can verify this very easily by putting this lever on the loop. We now hold the opening from the breathing hose to our cheek and in and exhale through the mouthpiece. As you can see, one end has an overpressure and the other sucks onto the cheek with an underpressure. That means that the valves are ok, o-rings looks good. Next item please. What does this lever do? We haven't talked about it yet, have we? Not yet. A normal regulator is integrated in the mouthpiece and we can use this lever to switch between the loop and this regulator. This simple switch option is a full time improvement to other rebreathers and offers a quick solution in the unlikely event of a bailout. Bailout? Bailout describes a procedure that we can use in an emergency. In the event of a problem with the rebreather, we flip the level and receive the breathing gas directly from the tanks. So we do not have to take the mouthpiece out and we do not need to switch to another system. Alright, yes that makes sense. Then continue with the check. Ok, number 14. Insert the breathing loop onto the unit. Insert the low pressure hose to the bailout valve and ensure that the locking mechanism is in place. Ok, this is the low pressure hose that powers our bailout valve. We check if the screw connection is tight. The ends of the breathing hose and the connections are color coded. This way we will not mix them up. Just plug it in and snap into the place. And to the next item. Alright, number 15 and the last item. Connect the heads up display to the bailout valve. This is the head up display and we simply attach it to the mouthpiece. Like this. What does the heads up display indicate? It is positioned in front of your face so that you can easily see a little lamp that is currently flashing red. The head-up display is connected to your controller and usually show a green light. A red light indicates that something is wrong and we have to check our controller which show us the problem. So we have additional visual information. Ok, now it's flashing. This means that I still cannot dive with the device. No, we still have to complete a second checklist. This is a closed check. Let us do it on the same way. You read the steps and I check if everything is ok. Ok, this is how we do it. Can we start? Yes. Alright, number one. 
open the bottom cylinder valve and verify that the pressure is appropriate for the plant dive. Then close the cylinder valve and depressurize the regulator. Here we have our bottom tank. I open the tank. We have 200 bar tank pressure. I close the tank and I release the pressure with the perch button. Perfect. Number two. Open the decompression cylinder valve if used and verify that the pressure is appropriate for the plant dive. Then close the cylinder valve and depressurize the regulator. So here's the decompression tank. I open the valve again. We have a pressure of 200 bar on the tank. I close the valve and again release the air with the perch. Number three. Inspect the breathing gas supply connection and connect them if no water is present. The two color-coded hoses must be connected to the tank. Black is for the bottom tank and yellow is for the decompression tank. It is a simple clip system, similar which we have on the inflator. Let's take a look at the bottom tank. No water anywhere and the hose is now connected. The same goes for the deco tank. There is no water and the tank is now connected. Done. Four. Ensure the necessary gases and set points are programmed into the controller. To do these, we take our controller, go to settings and check out the first point on the menu, gas settings. First of all, we enter the nitrox value of our bottom tank and in the second step, select the associated set point. After confirmation, we scroll down and select the setting for the deco tank. What is important here is the first option where we can switch off the deco tank in case we are not using one. Then we set the nitrox value of the deco tank again and choose our set point. We confirm that on our controller and our controller is set. Please read out the next item. Number 5. Verify the battery shown on the controller is greater than 30%. We already did that too. But briefly again it's a repetition. We look at the controller, go to info, confirm twice. And now we see our charge level, everything over 30% to the next item please. Number 6. Verify the overpressure valve is functioning properly. This is the little white valve in the first chamber. Here the horizon release the air when there is too much pressure. To check this, we now create the overpressure in the device. The lever must be placed on the loop. And now we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth into the mouthpiece. Wait a second, this is how it works. Okay, all good. Number 7. Select the pre-jump check mode on the controller and follow the on-screen instructions. One of the key features and the huge improvement over the rebreathers. During the pre-jump check, we check the sensors and the tightness of the rebreather. If anything is wrong, the controller will not release the horizon for diving. You can see here on the screen that there still is a red cross next to the pre-jump check. Beside the light on your head-up display flashes red. The pre-jump check is the second item on your controller menu. And after a short check the controller demands to create a vacuum in the horizon. We can do this by bringing the lever into the loop position. Then we breathe in through the mouth and breathe out through the nose. We confirm this via enter and now the horizon checks if the vacuum stays stable. The vacuum is stable and in the next step we are asked to open our bottom tank and confirm this on the controller. Now we should do the same with the decompression tank. Now please have a look at the upper part of the display. You can see two nitrox values here. These are the result of the breathing gas analysis in our deco tank by the two oxygen sensors in the horizon. These values should match our settings. If that is not the case, we have to assume that the sensor is broken or that our analysis was wrong. The pre-jump check then terminates the process and the horizon remains locked. Everything is fine with us today and we should now close the decompression tank and confirm again. Now the breathing gas flows from the bottom tank into the horizon and it's analyzed again by the two oxygen sensors. As you can see, we also have a match with our settings here. Now we are asked to start breathing. 
We put the mouthpiece in our mouth and breathe in and out normally with the lever on the loop position. Do not forget to confirm and breathe until the controller reports that the sensor are OK. We now see on the main screen that the pre-jump check was successful and is now marked with a green tick. And please take a look at our head-up display. Now the light is green. Number 8. Completely inflate the wing and verify that it holds its volume. This is the inflator, which works just like the ones we all know from our BCs. Inflate fully, wait for a moment, check if the wing releases air, everything looks good, next point. Number 9. Breathe in any gas from the loop to verify that the auto delivery valve is functioning properly. We find this valve in the first chamber. It opens when there is under pressure and adds breathing gas to the horizon. We test it just like we did with the vacuum test. We breathe in from the mouthpiece and out through the nose. Since our bottom tank is now open, the valve provides additional air, thereby avoiding negative pressure in the device. Everything is fine. To the next point please. Number 10. Close the cylinders and switch off the controller. Bottom tank is closed. Deco tank is closed. We switch off the controller and the mini. At the bottom, we have the mini item switch off. Confirm. And the controller is switched off. Cool, the last item, number 11. Inspect the harness, cross strap and gag strap for the rear and tier, correct positioning and proper attachment. We have the same quick releases and setting options here as on a usual ring. How this all works in detail, I show you later in the course. Okay, the checklists have been worked through, so we are ready to dive. Yes, the horizon is ready and we could start. But the preparation is a bit more complex than with a normal scuba tank. Yes, it requires more preparation, but it also gives us the benefit that I don't want to miss anymore while diving. Exactly, we already discussed the longer diving time, but what do you especially like about the horizon? The breathing resistance is lower compared to the regulator. And the cleaning of the air with the scrubber has the nice side effect that it is not so dry and always slightly warmed up. This way we don't cool down that quickly. Even if there are some bubbles, I personally like the silence. Okay, now I just have to do the course. How long do I need for this? You choose the deco version and it will take us 4 to 5 days. In addition to the theory and the pool, we will do 6 dives with the horizon. By the way, in the no deco version we need 3 days and 4 dives to complete the course. Great, then we have everything now and can start the course tomorrow. Yes, we can, and I would say we meet tomorrow at 9 a.m. Yes, sounds good. I hope you enjoyed the video and aroused your interest in the horizon. Please share the video with your friends, give us a like, and follow us on our YouTube channel. All relevant links can be found in the description, and I would be very happy if your next vacation takes you to Bali and you visit us here in Tulamben, be it for the SCR Horizon course or for a dive on the Liberty Wreck.